Oftentimes, we find ourselves celebrating the grass to grace story. But what about the opposite? What if you have it all and lose it all? Henry Rono might not be a familiar name to many, but the 69-year-old once broke four world records in less than three months. Steve Keter brings us Rono's story of redemption on how the athletics legend went from fighting the clock to fighting the bottle. What and uh, that report is here. Henry Rono was flying so high in 1978 that people failed to reconcile his present day to his past. From a high-flying athletics career in the United States of America to working as a cargo loader in an airport. I am a manager. <coughs> That's what most people used to meet me at the airport. So what happened with your running? Because people they don't understand that. So when an athlete go down, <coughs> you really go down and down. Following reports in 2019 of a veteran Kenyan athlete suffering in the U.S., well-wishers raised enough money to bring the former athlete back home. But more questions than answers would abound. The writing on the back of the 69-year-old Scott, his world record sword for posterity, is the first thing he shows us in our visit to his rural home in Kiptaragon village, Kapsabet, Nanti County. It is here where it all started running to and from school. That's the only thing I had, you know, and I knew that running would, would take me all over the world. His childhood dream would come true. A 24-year-old Rono quit Kenya Army after four years to attend university in Washington, USA. So I was recruited in uh, Washington State. Kutoka 1976, back uh, 19... 1978 will be the Kenyan's crowning moment, breaking four world records in 81 days. In the 10,000 meters, 5,000 meters, 3,000 meters steeple chase, and 3,000 meters flat. And despite not participating in the Olympics due to Kenya's boycott of the 1976 and 1980 games due to geopolitical reasons, the long distance athlete star shone bright in the U.S. collegiate meets. But as Rono was dominating the world of athletics, something else was slowly establishing dominance in his life, the love for the bottle. It initially didn't show in his performance, with a then world record holder able to win after a night of drinking. He even set a new world record after a night of intoxication. It was in my nature that I could train to a certain level that uh, nobody else could get there, you know, could reach that level. So to permit to break world record was, was not a problem. However, his agent for a sore doom and hatched a plan to have Rono taken to a rehab. So they gave me my, my money and then I go to the bank. From there they accused me that I, I robbed the bank. <laughs> so that's, and that's the only way they can, can get you by force. by force to go to rehab. And that was the beginning of the end of his brilliant career. He's journeyed down the tree of fortune as fast as he speed on the track. After I started the rehab, it became a, a continuation thing, you know, for years and years. My family could not understand the alcoholic person going to rehab after rehab, you know, and, and there's no way you can... Uh, explain them why you know homelessness arrests for drink driving and sporadic road race appearances featured prominently in his life as he tried to get a grip of his addiction over three decades later and henry rono now back home attempts to find peace at the point of genesis the 2008 iaaf inspirational award winner left his last rehab in 2015 steve Keter. NTV Sport, Eldoret.